Iron Mike has faced several final bosses in his professional career. One of them was Evander Holyfield in a long promised battle that took years to materialize and left no one indifferent. Welcome. Here you will learn the entire story behind the first encounter between Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson, two warriors destined to battle it out on more than one occasion. Heads up, the images you are about to see are unprecedented. Get comfortable because a true death match is about to begin. Finally wasn't a title chosen at random for this encounter. Tyson and Holyfield were originally scheduled to fight on June 18, 1990 in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Tyson, who was then the undisputed world heavyweight champion, was guaranteed $22 million, and Holyfield, the undisputed number one heavyweight contender, was guaranteed $11 million. However, these plans were scrapped when Tyson lost the title to James Buster Douglas by knockout in the 10th round on February 11, 1990, in Tokyo, Japan. Eight months later, on October 25th, Douglas lost the title to Holyfield by knockout in the third round in Las Vegas, Nevada. The second scheduled fight between Tyson and Holyfield was to take place on November 8, 1991, at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It would be Holyfield's second title defense, and he was guaranteed $30 million. This time around, Tyson was only guaranteed $15 million. But on September 9th, Mike was accused of raping a contestant in a beauty pageant in Indianapolis, Indiana. Although some believe the fight should have been canceled, all signs pointed to it proceeding as planned. Then on October 19th, it was announced that Tyson had injured his ribs and the fight would have to be postponed. Since Mike's trial was scheduled to begin on January 27, 1992, it was decided not to speculate on a new date for the bout. On February 10th, Tyson was found guilty of rape and sent to prison. On March 25, 1995, Tyson was released. The incredible Iron Mike proved he was back, regaining his World Boxing Council heavyweight title with a third round technical knockout over Frank Bruno on March 16, 1996. He also regained the World Boxing Association heavyweight title with a first-round technical knockout over Bruce Seldon on September 7, 1996. His mandatory challenger was Lennox Lewis, but Tyson knew he had unfinished business with Holyfield. So Mike relinquished the World Boxing Council title and accepted his destiny. With $30 million guaranteed, compared to Holyfield's $12 million, arrangements were made. Finally, on November 9, 1996, what fans of the sport had been waiting for so many years materialized. There were no more excuses, and an incredible crowd of over 16,100 people gathered at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, to witness the promised duel. This time, Tyson was to defend his World Boxing Association title for the first time. Holyfield stepped into the ring with a professional record of 32 victories, 23 of them by knockout and three losses. Tyson entered with 45 victories, 39 by knockout, and just one loss. To closely follow the match, Dalby Shirley, Jerry Roth, and Federico Vollmer were called in as judges. The third man in the ring was none other than Mitch Halpern. First round, Tyson lunged at Holyfield, unleashing the beast he was in his early days. The clash of power between the two fighters produced the first clinches. Tyson threw his right hand at Holyfield, aiming to make this one of the shortest fights of his career, but he didn't connect. When Holyfield found himself in trouble, he resorted to clinching. When he wasn't, he counterattacked, showing why this fight had been worth the wait for so many years. Second round, Tyson continued launching missiles at Holyfield's body, which were cleverly dodged. Mike had already fought real giants in the past and knew he needed to attack the body to wear it down enough before going for the head. Tyson experienced a serious moment of tension against the ropes, with Holyfield executing a powerful barrage of punches on him. After clinching, Halpern put some distance between them. Back in the center of the ring, Mike made sure to show he wasn't defeated yet. <laughs> Third round. As soon as the bell rang, 
Holyfield grabbed Tyson's body. There wasn't a clear aggressor, even in the third round. Both fighters aimed to hurt each other. Even the clinches were situations that could escalate further. Holyfield seemed successful in pushing Tyson against the ropes, although the champion didn't stay there long. In the center of the ring, the fearsome exchanges occurred. Fourth round. The fight had stabilized, but not in a negative way. From the first round, neither had ceased their offensive. After each bell, an incredible clash of forces took place. As the clock ticked on, the endurance of the fighters began to take on more significance. Which of them would exhaust their energy first and allow the other to dominate? Nonetheless, the clinches still seemed to work for Holyfield to neutralize Tyson's fierce offense and buy some time. Fifth round. Holyfield tried his luck exchanging punches with Tyson at the beginning of the round. Quickly, Tyson showed superiority by neutralizing his offense and dominating him. Holyfield had no choice but to resort to clinching and trying to survive the round. Sixth round. Tyson started the round by pushing Holyfield back to the ropes. Even in the clinches, Tyson had studied Holyfield enough to keep attacking the body. Holyfield seemed more concerned with containing Mike's ferocious offense than with launching his own attacks. But out of nowhere, a left hand landed on Tyson's jaw, sending him to the canvas. Getting up immediately, Tyson managed to fight until the end of the round. Seventh round. Holyfield didn't come out in the seventh to finish Tyson, and this cost him. His lack of aggression allowed Mike to regain the ground he seemed to have lost after that knockdown. With clinches, Holyfield seemed resigned to fighting to survive rather than to attack. Perhaps that knockdown would give him an edge on the judges' scorecards. The cut above Mike's left eyebrow, caused by a headbutt, needed to be checked by the ringside doctor, who cleared him to continue. But Mike's killer instinct told him he needed to act quickly before it affected his performance. Eighth round. With Holyfield fighting to survive, Mike created scenarios that favored his offense. If Holyfield initiated an exchange, he ended it with a clinch. Tyson evaluated Holyfield's responses to plan his final strategy. Ninth round. Tyson had a huge target on his left eyebrow, and Holyfield knew he had to attack it if he really wanted to hurt him. Holyfield intended to start exchanges, but he ended them with clinches once Tyson began to win them. With a knockdown in his favor and Mike's face bleeding, it was easy to see Holyfield as the aggressor in the fight. Still, Mike was far from giving up. I wonder Holyfield. Tenth round. Tyson couldn't hide his discomfort from the wound. He had to keep his guard high if he didn't want it to worsen with every blow Holyfield sent to it. They say there's nothing more dangerous than a wounded beast, and so it was. Gradually, the intensity of Tyson's offense increased. Holyfield's clinches were less and less effective at containing him, but Mike's victory still seemed distant. During the last 30 seconds of the round, Tyson had to endure a barrage of punches from Holyfield that made him stagger until he hit the ropes and bounced back. For the first time in his career, Iron Mike knew what it meant to be saved by the bell. Eleventh round. Holyfield hadn't finished Tyson in the two opportunities he had, but as they say, the third time's the charm. At the start of the 13th round, Holyfield picked up where he left off. Unleashing bombs on Tyson's weakened body, he seemed to receive no response or anything resembling a counterattack. That's when Halpern intervened and stopped the fight. Evander Holyfield was declared the winner by technical knockout at 37 seconds into the 11th round. If you've made it this far, thank you. Remember, the best way to support my content is by leaving a like on the video. Do you think Halpern made the right decision in stopping the fight? Or did Tyson still have something left to give? I'll read your comments.